In this video, I'm going to present an example to explain the mathematical requirements on the elasticity constants to ensure that energy is conserved during loading and unloading of an elastic material. This example can be found in your online notes in the link provided here. As a reminder from the previous video, for a material to be called linear elastic, the energy is neither created nor dissipated during the loading cycle of deformation. The matrix of constants uh, has to be symmetric for this to occur. So what happens if the ma matrix isn't? For simplicity, we assume a two-dimensional material whose relationship between the stress and the strain is provided with this matrix that is not symmetric. What happens if, if B and C are not equal to each other? And let's start, start with the square of this material. We are going to take it through a cycle of loading and calculate the cumulative energy. For the material to be considered elastic, we expect the total energy through a cycle of loading to be equal to zero, loading and unloading. First, we will load the material with a stress T in the vertical direction. We will then hold this stress constant and load it with a stress T in the horizontal direction. Finally, we are going to release both stresses simultaneously so that the square returns back to its original shape. In the initial stage, the applied stresses are equal to zero. So if we put zeros here, the strains are also going to be equal to zero. In the second stage, the applied stresses are equal to zero in the horizontal direction and T in the vertical direction. When I substitute zero and T in this relationship, I will get values for the strains that are equal to BT and AT. So if I put here zero, and multiply this by that, I will get B multiplied by T. And when I multiply this by that, I'm going to get A multiplied by T. So I get these strains at the end of uh, when we reach stage two. In the third stage, I have stresses applied in both directions of values T and T. So if I substitute T for sigma one, one and T for sigma two, two, multiply this matrix by T and T, I will get this uh, a form for the strains epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 2. In the final stage, when the stresses are removed, the strains are also equal to 0. When I substitute zeros here, I will get zeros for the strains. We're going to digress for a minute to explain how to calculate the energy associated with the deformation of a linear elastic material. When a stress, for example, sigma 1 1 or sigma 2 2, so when a stress increases from a value sigma a to sigma b, and if this corresponding strain, so let's say epsilon 1 increases from epsilon a to, to epsilon b, the energy when uh, sigma 1 goes from sigma a to sigma b and epsilon 1 1 goes from epsilon a to epsilon b is equal to the area under the curve. The area under the curve is equal to sigma a multiplied by delta epsilon plus delta sigma multiplied uh, by delta epsilon over two. We are now going to apply this to each change in stage, moving from stage one to stage two, sigma, 2, 2, which is the vertical stresses, change from 0 to t, while epsilon uh, 2, 2 changes from 0 to a t. When we apply the equations listed in the previous slide, we get an energy input of a t squared over 2. Going from stage 2 to stage 3, we notice that sigma 1, 1 changes from 0 to t, epsilon 1, 1 changes from b t to a plus b multiplied by t. Sigma 2, 2 is held constant uh, at t, 
while well, epsilon to 2 changes from a t to c plus a multiplied by t. When we apply the previous um, equations to both uh, uh, pairs of stresses and strains, we get an energy input of a t squared over 2 plus c t squared. During unloading, sigma, the stresses go from t to 0, while the strains go from these values to 0. Again, if we apply the previous uh, equations, we get an energy output of these values. The total energy is equal to the sum of the energies that cause the transition from each stage to the next. It turns out that the total energy is equal to a term that is a function of the difference between C and B. The total energy is equal to C minus B T squared over 2. If C is not equal to B, this is not equal to 0. This example shows the importance of having the two terms B and C equal. This a relationship has to be symmetric. If they are not equal, the material uh, would, model would predict phys physically impossible behavior where energy could be created or could be dissipated during a loading cycle of a deformation of an elastic material. Remember, an elastic material by definition preserves the energy. Humans capitalize on elastic materials by deforming them and storing this elastic energy and then using the energy to induce motion. A catapult stores elastic energy that can later be used to launch a projectile. A hockey stick is flexed and that the energy is then used for a slap shot. Springs store elastic energy that can later be used once the uh, spring is released. For illustration, think about a slingshot with an elastic rubber band. Once stretched, the energy stored can be used to launch a projectile. Imagine that a piece of a plastic bag is used instead of the rubber band. The energy used to extend the plastic bag is not recoverable. It's not an elastic material, and thus energy is dissipated in a different form and cannot be recovered to induce motion.